The United States is a home to many peoples and cultures. With the country being such a mixing pot of diversity, it is a pillar of pride for many Americans as to how diverse their country is, and it is extremely insulting when someone so much as coughs at one of the hundreds of ethnic groups calling the US their home. Not in Europe though. Here we celebrate kicking out entire ethnic groups out of our villages. Welcome to Hungary, a landlocked country located in Central Europe, most famous for its breathtaking capital of Budapest, delicious spices such as paprika, and the world's hardest board to cross if your skin tone has even a slightly darker shade of beige. For many Americans, Hungary is a feeling they have in their stomach even after eating 15 burgers coated in whatever artery clogging substance is popular in their country right now. But for other Americans, suffering with a superiority complex, or as I like to call them Canadians, Hungary is nothing more than their capital of Budapest, a place to take vacation photos and show them to their dinner guests who are trying their best to care for their amateur photography despite just wanting to finish the meatloaf and go home and do anything else. However, Hungary is much more than that, which should be of no surprise as the country has over 1000 years of history. One such place that demonstrates this is the town of Mohac, which lies 200 kilometers south of Budapest, in the South Dunantul region. Lying on the western side of the Danube, Mohac at first glance seems like a run-of-the-mill Central European town. In its center it has a main pedestrian street which is filled with shops and cafes and heads out to the Danube's riverbank as well as a broad central square where you can find a town hall which serves its 17,000 citizens. Despite its mediocre facade, Mohac carries a lot of significance in Hungary's history and culture, as in the 16th century the famous Battle of Mohac took place right here, where the Kingdom of Hungary alongside its numerous allies took a final stand against the invading Ottoman army of Suleiman the Magnificent. Within the battle, Hungary and its allies were outnumbered almost in a 2 to 1 ratio, as their army of 40,000 men faced off against the Ottoman army of 100,000, which ultimately ended in Hungarian defeat and the kingdom being divided into three parts. With the defeat of Hungary, most of Mohács' inhabitants fled the town and moved to nearby swamplands, as even living without basic necessities is better than living under a Turkish government. Desperate heartbroken and with their morale at an all time low, it seemed like all hope was lost, until one day a Croatian man appeared from seemingly out of nowhere and told the people not to lose hope and prepare for battle, to carve various weapons and scary masks and wait for a stormy night when a masked knight will come for them. The runaways did just that and prepared as the mysterious man told them. A couple of days later the masked knight arrived and ordered them to put on their masks and follow him through the storm back to Mohac, while making as much noise as a high school special ed class in Detroit. The Turks, seeing a horde of masked furry creatures approaching them from beyond the fog, started screaming and running away in a panicked state as they were under the impression that a horde of demons was coming upon them, and thus the people of Mohac won back their town and held it until the Ottomans realized that the only demons out there were themselves and came back in an embarrassing march of shame home. Thus every year in February the festival of Busho Yarash aka Poklade in Serbo Croatian is held to commemorate the collective effort of trolling the Turks into leaving the town. Some haters will say that it's actually a pagan holiday that is celebrating the chase away of winter, but that doesn't sound nearly as funny so it's not true. Source? I made it up. Throughout the duration of the festival, the streets of Mohac will be filled with the Busho, which could be defined as the main characters of the holiday. The Busho is a monstrous being characterized by the giant wooden mask that usually boasts a devious smile, a white fur coat and trousers stuffed with straw. The Busho will always carry with himself either a cowbell, a clapper or a wooden mace as their main life purpose is to cause more noise than an underprivileged black high school girl at 7am in homeroom eating hot chips and laughing maniacally with her best friend. However it is not uncommon to see Busho with a wooden pitchfork or some other accessories. Oftentimes the busho will travel throughout town in small groups while riding carts or tractors and trolling onlookers by throwing feathers onto their heads or hitting their butts with sticks. The busho aren't the only characters present during the festival. They are usually also accompanied by the seep busho, which means pretty busho, who are girls dressed in traditional Croatian chokci outfits, whose faces are covered with a veil, 
While in real life one might question the purpose of women, the Seep Busho have a very important purpose of guiding the Busho through town as their sight is usually handicapped due to their masks. Another supporting character archetype within the festival would be the Yonkele, who is identifiable by looking like a scarecrow, as they wear sacks on their heads and other rags they can find lying around. The Yonkele's main purpose is to clear the road of people so that the Busho can pass. Usually they will approach bystanders in the way and lightly smack them with a sack of sawdust, ash or flour because they can. Dressed up like that, the partakers of the festival will walk through town and cause mischief and show off their costumes and accessories, constantly trying to outcompete each other in their ridiculousness. According to the Croatian Shokti interpretation of the tradition, the meaning of the festival is transformation. People partaking in the holiday are said to be experiencing it in a different state of consciousness and are more in tune with their instincts and free of the boundaries of time and space, which makes them almost as spiritual as the 40-year-old Kali mom who just discovered healing crystals and essential oils for the first time. The beginning of the festival starts when the Bushos cross the Danube on Shrove Sunday. Upon doing so, they lay a winter coffin down the river and later on in the evening light a huge bonfire. At the end of the festival, another coffin is burnt in a bonfire at the main square, as to welcome spring. Within the town of Mohach, the Busho are divided into 50 different subgroups, but also help each other out. Prior to the 21st century, the Bushos would go throughout town, going from house to house, receiving gifts that mainly consisted of food and palinko in exchange for good fortune and chasing away winter. They'd also bring plows with them and plow up the yard of the owner's house they were visiting. Later on in the 19th and 20th centuries, they would plow up the yards of only the farmers who wouldn't let them do it because fuck you, that's why. Another fun fact regarding the costumes is that the, most of the masks are handcrafted and some even believe that to become a true busho, you must craft your own mask. The dresses that Siep Busho wear are most of the time passed down from generation to generation, and many pieces you can see are hundreds of years old. Tradition demands that the Busho must not reveal his identity and his face must remain hidden throughout the duration of the holiday, which in turn leaves the many Bushos switching masks throughout the day to keep their identity a secret. And yeah, that would be the Busho Yagash, one of the weirdest if not the weirdest holiday in Europe. Tell me. Does your country have any weird holidays? If so, what are they? Once more, thank you to the members of the channel who helped me create videos with their generous contributions. Special thanks to Julian Apostasies, Mickey D, Pavan, Anthony YouTube, Roland S, Nequa, Emmanuel Doncilla, Andrei Sorin Parskiv, Pudel Roz, Ramberlads, Jozef Borat, PC Chan, Gergo Horvat, Seal King, Badu, Martin Melinkrov, Igru, Paul Pierce, David, Lost Steiner, and yeah, my name is Janusz, and you've watched Living Ironically in Europe. Hey, hey, why are you